The Tasmanian government's taking steps to address the high number of nursing graduates forced to head interstate in search of work. Unions estimate three in five local graduates last year couldn't find work. That's despite claims by nurses that they're chronically overstretched. Filing in on a public holiday for the final exam of the semester, nursing students hope the hard work will end in a job close to home. I've had two placements so far and basically everyone that I've spoke to have said how difficult it is to find a grad position. I know of a few girls that were looking a few months just to find a job. There's a few people in that class, uh, single mothers, um, that kind of have ties down here so it's a bit 50-50 in our class. Um, a lot of people would ideally like to stay here including myself. Three kids at home, um, all in school, high school, it's just not an option for us to uproot and go. But uprooting is a decision many have been forced to make. Unions estimate 60% of last year's Tasmanian nursing graduates didn't find work in the state. The government is lacking uh, foresight in relation to this where you've got nurses working overtime. Uh, that means the government have to pay more money uh, and yet employing more nurses would actually save the budget money. Not as simple as that, according to the Health Minister, Michael Ferguson. He's committed to hiring about 550 nurse graduates over four years, which he says is 85 more than was planned by the last government. He warns the boost won't bring an end to some nurses working 16-hour back-to-back shifts. I'm not saying that we should have zero double shifts because sometimes it is perhaps quite necessary on the basis of somebody being unavailable at, at at uh, late notice, but we do want to reduce them as much as we possibly can. For those seeking nursing jobs, the jobs boost is a small comfort. I'm just crossing my fingers though and hoping that I'll <laughs> you know, make the grade, yeah. The Health Minister points out graduates can also seek work in private hospitals and in aged care. Stephen Smiley, ABC News.